Welcome to JotForm. I'm Noel, and in this video, we're going to discuss how to measure customer satisfaction. Did you know that 40% of customers who have a bad experience with a business will avoid it for the next two years? That's why gauging customer satisfaction is so important. But have no fear, we're here to help you avoid the gruesome two-year customer hiatus. Just stay tuned to learn how. There are a ton of ways to gather customer feedback, whether that's in person, chatting on the phone, emailing back and forth, or customer surveys. The key is to find a method that allows you to collect customer feedback on a regular basis. This way, your company can gauge the overall customer experience and learn how to better products, services, and customer tools. A customer survey is the most common and scalable way to receive feedback. Sending a brief survey at varying times during the customer's lifetime allows you to pull necessary info on how their experience is going and whether or not they intend to use, buy, or recommend your product in the future. Let's take a closer look at the three different types of customer surveys and how they measure customer satisfaction. First up, the Customer Satisfaction Score, or CSAT for short, is the most common way to measure customer satisfaction. After a customer interacts via phone, ticket, or live chat, they are asked, how would you rate your experience? The customer then chooses a number between 1 to 3, 1 to 5, or 1 to 10 to rate their experience. Ratings are then compiled and figured into a percentage. You can do this by taking the number of respondents who selected the same response and divide it by the total number of respondents. Here's how it works. Say 50 people were surveyed. Of those 50 people, 40 people chose 10 as their answer. You divide 40 by 50 and get 0.8. Then multiply that by 100 to get a percentage. You learn that 80% of survey takers had a positive experience. The CSAT survey method is known for its simplicity. It's a brief and intuitive survey that respondents can fill out in seconds. You can even incorporate emojis or stickers to make these quick surveys fun and easy. Since these surveys take hardly any time to complete, they have a higher response rate. One downside to the CSAT survey is that most customers that had a neutral experience won't fill out the survey. So your results may skew heavily towards people who have had either a positive or negative experience. The second most common type of customer survey is the Customer Effort Score, or CES. The main pull for a CES survey is that it answers the question of how easily the customer was able to use your product or service and whether or not a customer is likely to keep using it. When comparing CES and CSAT style surveys, there is one major difference. A customer may have liked the service overall and ranked it highly in a CSAT, but a CES could reveal that the transaction itself was difficult. Here's how it works. CES responses are measured by finding the average of all the responses. For example, in a survey that asks, how was your experience purchasing our product? With seven answers ranging from easy to difficult, you'd simply subtract the number of easy responses from the number of those who selected difficult. The result will be between negative 100 and 100, with a positive score being the goal. The lower the score, the more difficult it is for customers to engage with your company. The main benefit to CES is that it predicts future purchase behavior. Therefore, the best time to use CES surveys is immediately after a touch point that leads to a customer making a purchase or signing up for a trial. The third type of common customer survey is the Net Promoter Score, or NPS for short. This type of survey gathers long-term happiness and customer loyalty. NPS simply asks the customer about their likelihood of recommending your product, company, or service to someone else. NPS results assume that the more the customer likes their experience, the more likely they are to recommend it. Here's how it works. NPS typically uses an 11-point rating scale ranging from 0 to 10. A rating falling between 9 to 10 is labeled as promoters, and a rating falling between 0 to 6 is labeled as detractors. Simply subtract the percentage of detractors from the promoters, 
the number will fall between negative 100 to 100, and just like the CES score, the goal is a positive number. The higher it is, the stronger the customer loyalty toward your brand. There you have it. The keys to customer service feedback, success. Now you can strategize and implement the best style of survey for your desired outcome. Or hey, implement all three and truly become a customer service savant. But before you go, let's do a quick review. We talked about customer service surveys and why they're so important to your company's growth and customer satisfaction upkeep. We also broke down the three most common ways for you to gather customer feedback and overall satisfaction. Whether you're using customer satisfaction score, customer effort score, or net promoter score, you can find helpful and intuitive ways to survey your customers regularly. So what would you rate this video? A 10 out of 10? A super big smiley face? I knew it. You're too kind. Thanks for tuning in to Jotform. I'm Noel. Can't wait to see you again soon.